Evening everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight. Answering the question, what runs better on old hardware, MX or Antics? Now, Antics is the classic centered on older hardware, but also centered on being system D free. MX is a little looser in the system D free department. Uh, but uh, and it of course isn't isn't specifically designed for older hardware. But a lot of people say, hey, the XFC environment, Fluxbox, maybe I can try it on old hardware. I got two machines here for you tonight. One is relatively modern, some sort of weird netbook Celeron process, Intel Celeron processor, two gigs of RAM, really crappy MMC, basically USB storage inside the device. 32 gigabytes. It's a netbook class machine from Lenovo. It's the S21e. It's a, it's fine for single tasks. It is a cheaper notebook. I think we got this for like I don't know, 180 bucks or something. It's it was originally purchased for the MX project, and also for the Antics project. Quite frankly, when we were developing our UEFI support many years ago, and this this thing's just kind of retired to testing duty. Runs MX okay. Also runs Antics actually really well. I'll show you some screenshots here in just a second on that. The second notebook we're going to look at, that's still a 64-bit machine. This next machine is a 32-bit only machine. It runs the old, the original, you gotta love it, the Intel 32-bit single-core Atom processor. I believe it's N270. EEPC. Remember these guys? Half-size screen. Weird keyboard with a half-size shift key. Actually a relatively capable machine, 160 gigabyte hard drive. It came with one gigabyte of RAM and Windows XP. Windows XP has been blown away long ago, but I upgraded the RAM to two gigabytes. It's really durable. You can beat it up, you can throw it, you can do whatever you want to it. Uh, it's still got a replaceable battery. It's got really slow wireless in it because it's pretty old at this point. But uh, it makes a capable little video player or a notebook computer. It only weighs two and a half pounds and it's a very small machine. So this was my go-to for camping for a long time. These days I take I take the S21e or or another laptop of similar vintage, 32-bit only. So uh, we do have a 32-bit edition of MX, and quite frankly, I've never installed MX on this machine. This machine is usually regulated to Annex. So uh, we're gonna try it out. I took some screenshots because quite frankly, you can't I can't record on these things. Recording experience was terrible. If you're looking to do anything more strenuous than watching a movie. You're not going to play a game. You're not. You're not going to want to use these things for any kind of heavy graphics work. But they make a halfway decent portable writing machine. Maybe go down to the lake, click, 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 click away, do your thing, and you can make them work for that. So let me take a look at the screenshots. I took screenshots of the memory consumption. I'll give you some impressions here on the machine. Now this first screenshot is from the S21e. It is, uh, I used free, the free command, for all, all the comparisons here because I needed to standardize it on something and, and, and HTOP and Conky give me different values. Free, same on every machine. So, see I got 1.8 gigabytes of RAM in this machine. I got a healthy amount of swap here. Uh, this is, this is, an, uh, this is at idle. There's no processes running, but I have started Firefox already and, so, and brought it back down. I checked that. I, I, I did two, three, two checks for, all the machine, for both machines. Idle at boot. Firefox while it's running. Uh, usually I have Firefox while it's running a uh, YouTube video. And then idle after Firefox has been closed. For whatever reason, the screenshot for, for, the, for the original one didn't turn out very well. But it was very similar, except I didn't have any swap used. That came in while Firefox was running. And 622 megabytes of RAM was about the, uh, the same that it was using before. So anyway, this is MX21.1 standard release XFC desktop. The next image is Antics, same condition. Uh, this is screenshot running idle after I've started Firefox. You can see the difference here. 141 megabytes of RAM. 904 free. This is the same machine. Now Antics got several fewer processes running, uh, which accounts for most of the RAM usage, but also, quite frankly, window manager only environment is a lot lighter than your average desktop environment. So it brings RAM up. The RAM is not the whole story with this, okay? This is Firefox running YouTube. 1.2 gigabytes of RAM used. I'm into the I'm into the swap. I got very little free RAM left over. Switching over to Antics. 
Now I've, I've, I've got I did several several checks because I was waiting for the RAM to shut down. But this is it here. This is with the same YouTube video running, 642 megs of RAM, and it's it, quite frankly Antics was a little more responsive than MX on the same machine. Um, I've actually uh, normally I use Antics from a live USB on this machine, but I've actually gone ahead and installed Antics on here. Frankly, the U, the the storage is so slow. Um, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference whether it's installed, installed or running from the live USB. But I've, I've changed this to being my, my watch videos on Sunday morning computer and having the USB sticking out while I was laying there propped up on my leg in bed uh, was not the best experience. So at any rate, I babbled a little bit. I'm sorry for those of you who comment on, video, on my videos and say you babble too much. Well, you got something to comment on. What can I tell you? So this is running 640 megs of RAM. Now remember, XFCE was 1.2, so about half, give or take, uh, as far as RAM usage. I will tell you, from a responsiveness standpoint, XFCE was fine, was very responsive. Antics was very responsive. The graphics acceleration on the MX, I think, is a little bit better than it is on Antics, but I standardized that a little bit by getting the same version of Firefox on both machines. That makes a little bit bigger of a play on the. EEPC. So this is the EEPC. You can see the screen short, right? Because this it's got the little half screen. It's 1024 by 768. This is the, the uh, this is just with a, a screenshot with Firefox running. I actually didn't get the RAM in this one. There we go. Here it is. Here's RAM on this notebook in the Antics in the web browser that comes on Antics, which is Firefox ESR, Debian's Firefox ESR uh, version. I don't remember the version that's on it right now. You can see with a YouTube video running, same video that's running in the other two, 372 megabytes of RAM used. Now you think to yourself, wow, that's great. You can really make a, a, a get something going on that little on this little computer. And you can. It, it, it's fine. It, uh, it, it, it was very stuttery. I'm not going to lie. Part of that might be the wireless that's in here. I don't know. Part of it might be... Hardware acceleration of the graphics driver in Firefox. I'm not 100% certain that the version of Firefox ESR is by default have hardware acceleration turned on. On the version that's on the Firefox mainline edition that's on MX, it is. And I think that makes a big difference. This video was very stuttery, but very low RAM consumption. Uh, the menus were still fairly responsive while the video was playing. The best thing to do... Oh, let me back up. You're not playing videos at 720p or or 1080p from YouTube on this thing. I used 360p, which is basically standard definition television, which looks surprisingly good on a, on a half screen, to be honest with you. So th there's the RAM uses for that. You can see the CPU up here is at 97% playing a YouTube video, and that's where it gets you. This the, the Atom process in this machine is just not very capable of, of running a modern web browser with YouTube running. But you have... Uh, we'll, we'll come back to a solution to that problem that Antics ships with by default and is available in MX as well in just a second. Now this is MX on the EEPC. You can see I have 626 megabytes free. I'm using 813. This is just with Firefox open. You can see the MX website behind me there, behind the terminal window. So we're not even watching a video and we're at 813. Antics playing a video was 372. Okay, so huge difference in RAM consumption, but there is something a little bit surprising. Here we are watching a YouTube video. It's not that much worse, 823 megabytes of RAM used. The weird thing was, is this actually wasn't choppy. Once, once it loaded and was running, it wasn't choppy at all. You could watch it quite pleasantly in the, uh, in the Firefox web browser on MX. I'm going to guess that comes down to hardware acceleration drivers. I haven't explored to see what's missing on Antics or what's included on MX that's not on the other, vice versa, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but it was, it was surprisingly usable. And you can see after I quit Firefox, RAM use has dropped back down to the 380 zone. So that's quite, most of the RAM is really taken up by your modern web browsers when you run these things. So what's the solution uh, for choppy video at better re screen resolutions? Three, I was, remember, I'm running 360p on this, which is more or less standard definition television. The solution is SMTube. SMTube is a, uh, you can see it in the background here, it's a browser for YouTube that will play videos in the in a video player of your choice. So actually, it actually buffers video down, plays it locally. You can play a little bit better of a video 
uh, using SM, actually a lot better video watching SM2, and they're not choppy at all. Uh, at the expense of not being in the browser, so you're not going to get the comments, you're not going to get the notes. You, you can still look at that stuff on the on the web browser, but you you can run it in this, and you can see running that same video 165 megabytes with SM2 running versus fire versus trying to do the same in Firefox. That's an impressive RAM drop, and anybody that's running on anything less than two gigabytes of RAM is probably going to be relegated to this. If you're running on one gigabyte of RAM, it, forget about it. Don't bother trying a YouTube video. So, what should you use on on the on the class of machine? You can use them both, but if you're looking if you're RAM strapped, if you're looking for RAM, if you're really RAM conscious, uh, like this machine is, then Antics is the way to go. Oh, one other thing, you'll notice while playing SM2, 43% CPU consumption versus all the operating systems, all the operating systems running on the EEPC maxed out the little Atom processor. So if you got a little Atom N270 or something similar, Antics with alternative video playing methodology is probably the way to go for you. If all you're doing is running a LibreOffice document or typing or standard web browsing without too much in a way of multimedia content, both will satisfy on the really, really low spec machines. Antics is going to perform better. They were both reasonably well on the S21e, but Antics was more responsive, so I kept it on the machine. Hope that answers some questions out there for you guys. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinks.org or annexlinks.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.